So chapter 26.3 is a short one, which is wave-particle duality. So we're going to kind of explore this idea that a particle can be both a wave and a particle at the same time. So I mean, when we think about waves in the form of sound waves, or say water waves, it's really easy to see that waves, don't, these waves don't represent a physical quantity. They represent kind of movement of something, a uh, movement of energy through a medium, and that's really easy to see. It's just transversal energy. It's it's not an actual thing, it's just things that are already there moving in a specific way which transfer energy. And we know that these waves act in a very um, interesting way. So if you put a slip through them, they start diffracting through them. And if you, um, uh, say, for example, you put two slits, and then they will start interfering with each other. And um, it's really, really interesting, like that. And then it gets even more complicated that um, it, we, we've shown that light is able to do this as well. Um, that light can obviously diffract as well. So that's where the idea that light was a wave came from, that light had, was a continuous wave energy because it exhibited these wave-like properties. Um, moving onwards though, we can see that we just proved that what waves, uh, light is in fact small photons. So if these, ac they actually are kind of physical objects, which are called photons, they are quantized. So this kind of gave the idea, can other things also have wave-like properties? And what they did was they tried and produce they tried and produce this diffraction pattern with an um, um, beam of electrons. So they took a thin foil, and what they did was they shone a beam of electrons through it, and then onto some graphite, and then they took a diffraction pattern. And guess what? They were successful. They actually managed to find a diffraction pattern for electrons. Um, so I'm going to bring up a picture of that uh, right now and give a look at show you what it looks like. So here we go. There's a lot of diffraction patterns depending on, um, say, for example, uh, what you're diffracting it through. Um, but here's one example. This is a beam of electrons being picked up as a diffraction pattern. And this proves that electrons also have wave-like properties. And remember, um, so do X-rays, so do radio rays, because they're all, well, not only do they have wave in their name, but um, in the case of radio waves, but um, remember, X-rays, radio waves are all light of different frequencies. They're all electromagnetic radiation. So then they came up with this idea for um, wave-particle duality, and this is kind of interpret qualitatively the evidence provided for by electron diffraction for wave nature particles. And electrons are the ones that really set things apart. They, they theorized if photons can do it, and they're physical, and electrons can even do it, and they are definitely physical, they even have mass and they have charge and everything, then could all things at an atomic level exhibit wave-like properties? And the answer is yes. This is amazing. This is one, another one of those great discoveries Einstein made. Um, so basically, Einstein theorized that um, at the atomic level, um, and or at the quantum level, everything, uh, all particle movement can be expressed as a wave. And they came up with this de Broglie formula, or the de Broglie wavelength, which is stating that the wavelength of any particle moving would be equal to Planck's constant over the momentum of that particle. So um, this one's a little bit difficult when um, you can't really give momentum of photons because photons have no mass, but for electrons and other small tiny particles it makes sense. Maybe you could use this as quarks or anything like that. And basically, so you look at the momentum, so you can see that the wavelength of electrons actually does vary with its velocity. Um, so that's an interesting fact, and you need to be able to use this. And you basically need to know, know that electrons are able to ex exhibit both particle um, properties, as well as photons, as we've shown before with a um, photoelectric effect, as well as wave particles, wave properties, which is diffraction and interference. Mostly diffraction. And you should know that electrons can exhibit diffraction patterns. Um, so that's basically it. This was, a, like I said, a short video, and I'll see you in the next one.